Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we shall talk about intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. <coughs> we said that depending on the band gap, solids are divided into three types insulator, semiconductor, and conductor. In insulator, the gap between the balance band and conduction band is huge. So, no carrier can jump from balance band to conduction band and in, in conductor there is an overlap between these two bands. So, the carriers in this overlap region are free to move within the material. But for the case of semiconductor there is a small gap and this gap is there is no fixed value that comparing to which we can say if it's easy the band gap is below some value that we call a semiconductor we cannot say like this because there is no defined value but in practical purposes if we see that a band gap is around one electron volt or less than that we say that that is a semiconductor but you shall at the same time you shall also find some semiconductor they have band gap about 2 electron volt or something like that. Now for the diamond the band gap is about 6 electron volt for silicon this is the, the semiconductor that we shall talk about mostly and in every devices where the semiconductors are used you shall find this is mostly based on silicon so thus for the silicon the band gap is 1.14 electron volt and the, for the germanium the band gap is about 0 0.7 electron volt there are other semiconductors also so for indium antimony you shall find this is 0.18 for gallium arsenide this is also another very common semiconductor 1.42 and uh, these are other two also now what is the electron volt the electron volt is defined if you place an electron in one volt potential different difference the energy that it feels or it, it have is called the one electron volt therefore the one electron volt is the charge of one electron multiplied with one volt that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule now still this is a very small number and is difficult to understand so if we use this equation we can convert the temperature into energy here kv is the Boltzmann constant and the T is the temperature in Kelvin scale. So if we take 27 degrees Celsius that is 300 Kelvin that is approximately 26 milli electron volt. Now if we look at the periodic table this is the region where the atoms uh, or the systems are mainly behave semiconducting type so this silicon germanium arsenic these are semi metals and they mostly have the semiconducting behavior this is the silicon so its atomic number is 14 and this is how it look like it shining metal material sorry this is not metal this is semiconductor if you look at the structure so this is the structure of the semiconductor also diamond has this kind of a structure so if you look at this cube uh, at this cube you see the corner atoms and there are also some atoms inside the cube that is if you look this is the thing so the, these are, these are corner atoms also in every phase there is an atom and there is also atom this is the same atom for silicon i just colored it differently so that it is it become easy to visualize 
so this is the uh, the unit of a semi uh, silicon this is diamond like a structure so you have the corner atoms you have in the at the face and you have some atoms in the middle also the distance of this edge is 5.43 angstrom and these are all uh, 3sp tetrahedral bond that is the 3s and 3p bonding the um, hybridization uh, because of, uh, of the 3s and 3p and the length of this bond is 2.35 angstrom so the all atom is uh, the separation between any two adjoins atom is 3.53 angstrom okay now and the this is the crystal structure of the silicon when the material that is used in the the semiconducting devices they are first prepared like uh, the semi uh, this is called silicon ingot this is a pure crystal this is one crystal uh, uh, ideally there may have uh, some uh, defects but this is very uh, in negligible order so then they are uh, sliced this wafer are prepared so in 1975 the wafer size that was people are able to prepare that is the radius of this ingot was about 100 millimeter now in 2017 uh, people can produce that the uh, ingot with uh, radius so uh, diameter sorry this should be the diameter is of 450 millimeter this length the diameter of this 450 nanometer okay when the wafer are prepared they are sliced actually then this is sliced in the plane 100 remember we talk about the crystal planes and to make it easy uh, to see that to get this easy there is also sometimes a flat edge or cut it at 011 so this is 100 plane this is 011 plane and this is 111 plane this is the stm image at zero uh, sorry at 111 plane actually so you can see individual atoms can be visualized now if we take a projection of this structure in two dimensional and uh, simplify it and uh, we uh, see that for every atom it is connected to the four atoms so if you take this one for example you see uh, let me so this one you have this one two three four if you take for the this one also you will see one two three four this is same for all of them one two three four so every atom is connected to the four nearing neighboring for near nearing atoms they are not in the same plane but here we have take uh, we have made it simplified so that it can be easily visualized so this is a silicon it is connected to the four uh, nearest four neighboring atoms so this is this one connected to the this one also and to this one connected to the this one also this is four neighboring atoms now uh, the silicon is silicon in its last shell has four electrons so one two three four but this is shared with the each of the atoms shared with an, another silicon that is the covalent uh, bond is formed by sharing the electron so the each uh, atom share four electron with 
four other atoms. That is, uh, finally, it has its octet is filled. So, these electrons are called valence electrons at 0 temperature, at 0 Kelvin, they are all sitting in this band and the conduction with band is empty and there is no irregularity. But as the temperature increases at the room temperature, because of uh, heat and also it could be light also, some of the electrons. So, in this structure, the electron was sitting here, but if you look at this one, the electron moved to this some empty places, leaving a void or hole at its original place. So, this is at room temperature, some of the electrons jumped from partial, uh, sorry, from balance band to the conduction band, making a uh, hole here, the void spaces, that is the, the elect these electrons are supposed to be here, but they move to here at room temperature. So, that means that at room temperature, the, some of the electrons will have enough energy to overcome the gap or the barrier. Now, uh, this uh, as I told before, this can be because of the heat, the temperature, also it could be because of the light also. At room temperature, there are approximately 15 billion free carriers in every cubic centimeter. Of course, we are talking intrinsic semiconductor, that is the all atoms are silicon. Now, if we look at this in the periodic table again, the silicon is group 4 element. So, uh, it has 4 electrons uh, in the last shell and these are shared, these 4 electrons shared with neighboring 4 atoms. But if we replace one of the silicon atom with uh, group 3 element or group 5 element, then we will have interesting case. If we replace with group 5 element, any of this, say for with the antimony, then you will have an extra electron. If you replace one of the silicon atom with the group 3 element, say with boron, then we will have a void space. So, these are the examples we have here replaced with the antimony that is the group 5 element. So, we have one extra electron and this is called N type material and this is no more intrinsic semiconductor, this is extrinsic semiconductor. That is, there is a doping or there is some uh, atom which is supposed to be silicon is replaced by with external atom. So, this is also extrinsic, but here since we have void, we have the extra spaces, that is we have hole, we call this P type material. So, when we have the excess carrier, uh, excess electron, we call this N type material, when we are lacking of electron, that is we have void spaces, that is hole, we call it P type material. Now, from here one electron, say for this example this one, this electron can come here and that will make a hole at this space. So, when the hole moves, this is actually the electron move, but we use this term simultaneously. We sometimes say electron moved, we sometimes say hole moved, but a hole cannot move without moving an electron to its original space because remember hole is called is actually a void place where we had an electron here, but when we replace the silicon atom with a boron, then we are lacking one electron, we call this hole. Of course, uh, we can have hole this way also because of the temperature, but here we are not talking about this uh, uh, that type uh, hole generated by that procedure, we are just saying because of the doping. 
the hole generated because of doping. So, when this electron move here, actually it is the same as hole moving from here to this place, that is it became here. So, in reality holes do not move, but in in, practical, in in the term that we use, we also say hole moves because it is sometimes easier to represent. But remember always that a hole cannot move unless an electron moved to its original place, sorry, the place of the hole and leaving its original place empty. That is making another hole there. So then we have two types of carriers actually four types of carriers one is electron another one is hole and also when say for this one this electron moved here leaving this making this as ion because it has 14 positive charges it had 14 negative charges around it but one moved so it have 13 negative charges meaning one net positive charge that is this became positive ion so, but if this electron for the when we substitute with the antimony, this electron moved, then this will be a negatively charged, sorry, this will also be a positively charged atom. But if one electron move from, say, for example, this one move to this one, then the boron will be negatively charged ion. So, we have the ions, we have the uh, electron and we have hole in n type material the we have positive ions that is the donor ions who is giving the electron uh, sorry i made a mistake this when this electron move to another place this one become positively charged ion and uh, in the p type we have acceptors negatively charged ions and we have hole we have electron but remember in n type the majority carrier is electron and the hole is minority carrier where in p type material the majority is hole and the minority is the electron that's all for today thank you